96% of people check the phones within one hour of waking up in the morning and I'm not gonna lie, I'm one of these people. Uh, checking your phones, reading your texts, opening your emails, listening to your voicemails, all these can actually hinder you from doing uh, things in no time. Let's find out how you can do things in no time and, de- and just be productive. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to this week's episode. Here with you is Malak from the MTZ Weekly Podcast, the show where you learn something new every time you join us. Right, today's episode is all about how you can get things done in no time. Yes, you've heard it right, get things done in no time. We'll get into this and I'll give you all the hacks and tips that I've been doing myself and the found out from research that will encourage you to be more productive and get things done in no time. So, if you guys definitely want to be more productive during your day, follow these tips that I'm going to tell you right now. They are really, really important. And believe me, if you actually follow them and stay consistent with what you're doing, you'll actually get things done in no time and then you'll just be more productive. Before we get started with this week's episode, uh, if you guys are struggling with procrastinating and you're not getting your work done and you're missing your deadlines, you're missing, you're not going to appointments, you're not attending the meeting, you're just procrastinating and you're having like a proper, you know, relaxed mode. Uh, I encourage you to listen to last week's episode, which was about basically get uh, things done. Actually, wait, it was stop procrastinating right now. So yes, you can find that wherever you're listening to your podcast, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Listen Notes, and YouTube. It's called Stop Procrastinating Right Now. So now let's start with this week's episode. It's all about uh, getting things done in no time. The first thing I would definitely say is trying to wake up an hour earlier in the morning. Uh, I mean, uh, okay, it's alright if you're not a morning person. Personally, I am a morning person. I can't work at night. You know, there are two types of people. You can either be a morning person, you can be like an night owl. It's alright. You just, you know, you're just who you are. But um, you, if you actually, like, whatever time you wake up, if you try to set up your alarm, alarm an hour earlier than this time, uh, then you'll definitely be able to get an extra hour of, like, you know, peaceful work time. And believe me, take it, like, mark my word for this. I have done this in the past for so long, and it actually works. Like, if you, say, for example, you wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning, and, you know, you're not really getting enough time to do your work, uh, you just shift an hour earlier. So wake up at 5 a.m. and use that hour for your own benefit, you know. Uh, obviously, you're not going to waste it like, going through your phone or, like, you know, answering emails. Actually, use that hour in the morning to get something done that you actually that will actually be beneficial to you, that will actually add... Uh, quality it will add it will make you feel good during your day so that might be if you're in school might be like getting homework done or reading up for your next lecture or you know finishing an assignment that you had to finish and that one hour in the morning believe me it feels like more than one hour it just I don't know like morning time it feels like you've been working for so long and you get all your work done so and you know what actually like even several studies they actually correlate waking up early to productivity and success and you find a lot of successful people like you know in the, in the world right now uh, the, you like in the morning routine they all find out they wake up right in the morning they wake up at like 4 30 or 5 a.m and they get the work done early and they finish you know whatever they need to do before afternoon time so i would definitely recommend you waking up an hour earlier before usual time all right the second tip i'm gonna give you is making a daily to-do list i do this myself i currently i'm not doing it every day i'm doing it every two days but you should you should be actually do it every single day like a to-do list and you should have like actually you need to create a realistic to-do list right uh, you have your tasks written down that you need to tackle during your day and you should definitely keep it simple you don't want to add too many tasks too many complicated tasks and one one tip i would add to this is you know when you're writing your task they should be small chunks you don't want to write a big massive assignment or a big task that you have to do though it will actually be a lot difficult for you to do so definitely keep it consistent and you know uh do it like you know take it step by step this way you, you'll feel like it's easy and then you won't, you won't need too much encouragement to go on with your task so you should definitely write to do this on a day-to-day basis i would definitely recommend that and, you know, you'll get your things done in no time. And that feeling when you take that thing that you've done, it feels so good. I'm telling you this. <laughs> right. The third thing that you should do is do the hardest tasks first. And I've read this book. A week, I finished this book a week ago. It's called basically Eat That Frog by uh, Brian Tracy. I really, really encourage you 
have a look at that book. It's called Eat That Frog. And the idea behind this is the first thing you should do is you should start with your the most difficult that's the most difficult task that you have for your day. Definitely start with that one first. You know, you choose like you know whatever whenever you're in your to do list tasks. Uh, on a daily day basis, you know, have a look at your most of three priorities that you have to do for the day and choose the most difficult one that you have to do. Uh, start with that difficult one because when you do it, the other ones will become easy. All right. So that's this is like the other concept is about you should do your hardest tasks first. Uh, that way you'll feel like you've done, you've achieved something and then you'll be definitely more productive. And this something will encourage you to actually read more and, you know, do more work and finish, you know, all of what you have to do. Right, number four, I'm going to say something, it might not be, it might not seem important to you, but uh, I really, really, I feel like this one has a, a big impact on me, which basically says, clear off your desk, right, I'm this kind of person who, if I see my desk is messy and full of papers and everything is all over everywhere, I can't work, I just get proper stress and I feel like I'm not concentrating, uh, and I've, if, if you've heard this saying, it basically says that out of sight, out of mind. So the first thing you should actually do is um, have a good environment for you to work. Uh, you know, it, this way your brain can actually stay focused on what you need to do. So every day, 10 minutes maximum, I won't say like, you know, 10 minutes maximum. Before you start working, just make sure the, the place where you're working is actually clean and tidy. This way your brain will be able to concentrate on what you're doing and it won't really be distracted by all these things around you. Uh, as I've told you before, this actually impacts me and I ha I can't work if my desk is not clean and tidy. I have tried this myself. So every day if I want to like, you know, get something done, uh, the first thing I do if I see if my desk is nice and clean, you know, encourage me to work. If it's not, I'll just quickly tidy up and then I'll, you know, get on with working. Definitely. All right. Now, I think we got to number five, which is basically something that I used to do before. <laughs> I'm not currently doing, unfortunately. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to like, you know, get back to it, which is exercising in the morning. I think it was a year or two years ago. I used to be a big fan of exercising. I mean, all right, I'm still I am, but I'm just being a bit lazy right now. You know, winter is coming and all that. But exercising in the morning, oh my God, that just feels, that, that's like a different level like, you know, you can just go for a quick jog or like you can you do some yoga in the morning and it doesn't have to be like intense. You can just, you know, take five minutes and do your morning stretches, you know, to get your body moving and your blood flowing. Uh, definitely getting a workout in the morning will leave you to have a better mood and high levels of productivity. And I personally have tried this in the past. You feel like you you just feel so good, right? It's just something with exercise that boosts your levels, boosts your energy and then uh, especially in the morning, doing it in the morning will set your day like you know you have a good day after or after or afterwards. So you know if you if you haven't tried exercising in the morning before, you don't have to do like an hour or two hours. That's a lot. Just go for like ten minutes if you are a beginner, thirty minutes you know just for a jog or a walk. It'll be fun as well, and you can listen to some podcasts you know like the the one you're listening to right now, the Empty Says Weekly podcast. Right, we really appreciate it. Now, I think we got to number six, which is basically you should have a system. What I mean by system is basically organization. You need to have a clear and consistent idea of the products that you actually have to do or, or like the tasks that you have to get on with. So having a system means that your uh, your subconscious mind knows what exactly needs to do. I'm going to link this to something. I'm going to link it to the fact that uh, you need to plan your day ahead the night before. All right, this is really, really vital. If you plan your day at night before you go to sleep, uh, your brain will be working on all these tasks that you have written down at night. Okay, so the minute you wake up in the morning, you actually have you have a, like a, a fixed set of brain that you know that it knows exactly what it needs to be that what needs to be done. Uh, so this is like you know getting your brain to commit to something. Uh, this is actually good as well because sometimes when you wake up in the morning and then you just can't feel like doing something. And if you haven't set your brain to that thing that you have to do, you can easily procrastinate and do nothing. And I, I've been through this before. Like if I don't have a, if I don't plan my day ahead at night, or I don't write the tasks down at night, in the morning I might wake up, I might, I might feel a bit moody. I might not really have a lot high, high levels of, you know, motivation. I can easily slip away and then, you know, get nothing done. So you should have a system of organization, get your work done. And write your things or write your tasks the day before at night. What do you? It won't take you five minutes. So I'm telling you this. Right. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna end it here, but I'm just gonna say one last thing is you should focus on one thing at a time. Do not multi like you know don't do don't multitask right. That it's not like I don't know what I'm gonna say, but multitasking doesn't work. There's nothing called multitasking because the way we've been created, the way we are as humans, our brain can only focus. It can give full attention, hundred percent attention to one thing at a time. So the fact that you might be you might think that multitasking will actually mean you can get more done in less time. No, it's not going to work that way. Because in order to get something done more more efficiently, to properly concentrate on something and you know get get everything you need to do that needs to be done, you need to focus on that thing. So multitasking, just cross that out. You're not going to do multitasking. Uh, I have tried it before. I feel, you know at the beginning you feel like all right, yeah, yes, you're doing this, you're getting all of the, all these things done and finishing, but then you just get distracted. Because you're not focusing on this and you're not doing that thing. So just focus on one thing at a time, right? Here we are to the end of this episode. Thank you so much, guys. From my heart, I send you love and thanks and, you know, gratefulness. I'm grateful for you listening to this, right? And I'm hoping that whatever I'm saying is actually going to help you in some way, you know, get your life sorted and, you know, get things done in no time and start procrastination, definitely. Now, I, I'd love it if you can review us or, like, you know, rate us or wherever, you know, interact with our podcast on wherever you listen to your podcast from, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Listen Notes, and YouTube. Just write MTZ Weekly Podcast. And if you'd love, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. On Instagram and Facebook, you can just type MTZ Weekly Podcast. That's MTZ W E E K. L-Y podcast, right? As MTZ Weekly really Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. And you can find us on Twitter, you know, you can have our discussions and all that by typing MTZ Podcast. Now, before I'm going to say next week's episode, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, because I'm quite busy right now, unfortunately, I'm going to try my best to make one episode a week, which is usually on Fridays. But if I can't make it, I'm going to, like, fingers crossed, I'll be making one episode every two weeks. I'm not going to say that for sure. It depends on my schedule. But if I'm not if I'm not going to post next week, it means I post in the week after. No, right, right now. So next week, no, next week or the week after this episode is going to be 10 ways to boost your self-esteem. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye.